Okay, in this problem, we are going to try to find an orthogonal matrix P that diagonalizes a matrix A, um, and this is the A that we are going to use. Now, a lot of this process goes uh, pretty similarly along the same lines of finding an ordinary matrix P that diagonalizes another matrix, but there are some things we are going to have to do differently in order to make the matrix P also orthogonal. And so the very first thing that we will want to do is we will want to find the eigenvalues. And so remember that we set up this uh, determinant A minus lambda I, uh, the determinant of that equals zero. And so this ends up being, uh, let's see, when I were to do this out, four minus lambda cubed plus eight plus another eight minus four times four minus lambda uh, in fact, we have three copies of that being subtracted. Um, and that's it. So this is, let's see, when I multiply all of this out, I'm going to get negative lambda cubed plus 12 lambda squared minus 36 lambda plus 32. You'll want probably want to verify that for yourself uh, just so you can see if you can get that. But this is um, equal to, uh, if I factor a negative out to make this leading coefficient uh, positive, lambda minus 8 times lambda minus 2 squared. All right, so we can see that uh, either lambda is 8 or lambda is 2. Now, lambda equals 8 um, has an algebraic multiplicity of 1, so that one's going to be easier to work with. Lambda equals 2 has an algebraic multiplicity of 2, um, and so that one may be more complicated. So let's go ahead and find the um, eigenspace basis vector uh, for lambda equals 8. So if I put 8 in right here, I get negative 4 along the main diagonal, and of course 2's everywhere else. And I'm going to be solving um, the, uh, the system, the homogeneous system, uh, where that is equal to zero. Um, so you can look in the notes to see the specific um, uh, row operations that I end up uh, using here. But I will jump to the end. In the interest of time, this is a fairly involved problem. Uh, so I'm just going to tell you what the RREF for this ends up being. So you will get this matrix right here. So X3 is our free variable, which I will call T. And uh, notice the second equation becomes X2 minus X3 equals zero. So x2 would have to also be t, and then the top equation becomes x1 minus x3 is 0. So x1 would also have to equal t. So in other words, the um, eigenspace is the set of all vectors of the form t, t, t. And if I factor t out of that, um, I get 1, 1, 1. So 1, 1, 1 is uh, the basis vector um, for that eigenspace. Now, um, if I were just finding ordinary an ordinary matrix P, one that's not uh, orthogonal, then I could just use that as the column. But we are going to have to um, modify this. Uh, an orthogonal matrix, remember, has um, columns that are all unit vectors. So one thing I would have to do is definitely normalize this. I would have to make it a vector uh, with a magnitude of 1. But also, um, you know, we have this entire Gram-Schmidt process that we have to use um, on this. Now, the Gram-Schmidt process says, if I were to start with um, that vector right there, and uh, in that process, they refer to that um, uh, as U1, then uh, V1 is just equal to U1. 
right? That's the first step in the Gram-Schmidt process always. And of course, that's where we would stop trying to find uh, vectors for this because that's the only one. And so then the last step is that we would have to normalize this. And the magnitude of that vector is square root of three. Remember, we square each component, add them together, and take the square root. So the vector is uh, the one that has one over root three uh, as, e as every um, entry, all right? And in general, this is true if you have just a single uh, basis vector. Um, of course, that vector would be what we call U1, and in the Gram-Schmidt process, V1 um, is the same vector, and then Q1 would be what we get when we um, normalize that vector, all right? Um, so let's go ahead and look at lambda equals two. That was our other eigenvalue. And you'll notice if I were to come up with that system, it's essentially three copies of the exact same equation. So of course, when I apply row operations, both of the second two rows are gonna zero out. And if I divide um, the top row by two, just so I can get a leading coefficient of one, we will end up with our RREF for this matrix. And so you can see we actually have two free variables this time. Uh, I'll say x2 is s and x3 is t. Then that uh, equation becomes x1 plus x2 plus x3 equals 0, in which case x1 is negative s minus t. So the vector x would be negative s minus t, s, t, and you can see that um, this is going to require two, um, uh, two vectors for this. I'll go ahead and write that as s times negative 1, 1, 0, plus t times negative 1, 0, 1. <clears throat> so this is going to take uh, a little bit more work um, to find the, uh, the vectors that we need for this because there are two of them. And in fact, the Gram-Schmidt process is a little bit more involved here as well. So I'm going to call these vectors uh, U1, which will be negative 1, 1, 0, and U2, which is negative 1, 0, 1. Now, in the process, whichever one we want to call first, let's just use that one, doesn't really matter. Um, but V1 is going to be the exact same vector. Now, here's where the process is, uh, becomes a little bit more complicated. So, V2, to find V2, we're actually going to start with U2. But we are going to subtract the projection of U2 onto V1. Oops, V sub 1. There we go. Um, so I actually want to project this vector onto that vector. Now you'll recall that the formula for the projection is I should find the dot product of those two vectors. Um, and notice that would be 1 plus 0 plus 0. I will divide it by V1's uh, mat or dot product with itself, which would be 1 plus 1 plus 0. And then um, I need to, um, sorry, I would, I had to um, multiply that by the vector v1. So I'll go ahead and put negative 1, 1, 0. Something didn't look right, but it's actually uh, correct. And so if I go ahead and do this, I'm going to get minus half, minus half, positive 1. 
So I have my vectors v, and then the last step is that I need to normalize both of these vectors. So q1, you'll notice that v1 has a magnitude of root 2, so q1 is going to be negative 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2, and 0. And q2, so this... Um, the magnitude of this is 1 fourth plus 1 fourth plus 1, which is 3 halves square root of that, which is root 6 over 2. So if we uh, divide all the entries by root 6 over 2, I get negative 1 over root 6, negative 1 over root 6, and 2 over root 6. So now that I'm done with that process, I have my vectors Q, and those are going to be the... Uh, columns of P. Does it matter what order I write them in? Just like with ordinary diagonalization, no, it does not. What it will do is shuffle the, um, if you were to change the order, it will shuffle the eigenvalues around, but you'll still end up with a diagonal matrix. So uh, the matrix, I'll just put them in the order that we got them. 1 over root 3, 1 over root 3, 1 over root 3. Uh, that was from the uh, lambda equals 8. And then I'll put these in as well. 1 over root 2, 1, negative 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2, 0. And negative 1 over root 6, negative 1 over, I realized right here I wrote a 2, that should be a 6, over root 6, and 2 over root 6. So that is my matrix P. And that's what we were looking for. Now to convince you that uh, that did work, let's go ahead and find P transpose AP. You know, normally we would say P inverse AP, but because we have found a um, an orthogonal matrix, P transpose and P inverse are the same matrix. And in fact, transposing a matrix in general is much easier to do than uh, to find the inverse of that matrix. So I'm going to show you that... Um, what I get uh, is, in fact, what I would expect to get. So let me copy uh, these down along with um, matrix A. So I'm transposing right now. And then let's copy A over, which, remember, A had fours along the main diagonal and twos everywhere else. And then I'll put this matrix that we just found at the end. So in order to uh, multiply all of these together, I'm going to have to just take them two at a time. Um, so I will multiply. And it doesn't matter which order uh, we do that in, because remember that matrix multiplication is associative. But I'm going to start by just multiplying uh, the first two together. So this is going to be, let's see, 8 over root 3. Um, in fact, 8 over root 3 all along the top row. And then we're going to get, um, let's see, negative root 2, root 2, and 0 for the second row. And then we're going to get negative 2 over root 6, negative 2 over root 6, 4 over root 6 for the third row. And then, of course, I need to still multiply this by P at the end. And let's see what we end up getting when we multiply those together. Now, we should already know, uh, or we should already have an expectation of what we're going to come up with. Remember that the first column of P corresponded to lambda equals 8, and the second two both corresponded to lambda equals 2. So I expect to get 8, 2, 2 along the main diagonal and zeros elsewhere. So let's verify um, that that is in fact the case. So 8 thirds plus 8 thirds plus 8 thirds does in fact give us 8 here. Um, and then those two cancel, so you have a 0. And then all of those cancel as well. It helps that these were all the same entry. It's kind of easy to see what the um, that product will be. So then with these, um, these are the same. Those are the same. So those will both be zeros. But then these are opposites, and you get 1 plus 1, which is 2. 
And then um, along the bottom, that's a zero, that's a zero. Uh, and then this one will be two sixth plus two sixth plus eight sixth, 12 sixth, which is two. And so notice that is in fact what we expected uh, because I've got lambda one, lambda two, lambda three along the main diagonal and zeros everywhere else. So, um, and that's how you would find the matrix or a matrix uh, P that is orthogonal and also diagonalizes a given matrix A. So um, I hope that makes sense. And if you have any questions, please let me know.